What's going on everybody? Can epoxy be UV resistant? UV stable? What are these terms? What do they mean? What's the difference between UV stable and UV resistance? Well, if you want to know, hang on. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your host, Alessio The Truth. I'm not the truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except by Him. One way. That's through Jesus. Reminding you to be selfless and not selfish. I don't know how. It's already Thursday. I've been driving 90% of the time of this entire week. But it's Thursday. Beautiful day. It's raining. Overcast. You know, when it rains, guys, that's how you get your food. So be happy when it rains. Ladies and gentlemen, we're live! All right. So, everybody and they mama. I like you. And is it UV stable? Hey, man. Is it UV stable? Bro, that's made with epoxy. No, you got to use uh, you got to use polyaspartic. That's okay if you want to spend $1700 a square foot in material cost. Hey. But it also has its limitations, right? But anyways, can epoxy be UV resistance? Let's just put it out there so we don't have to wait to the end of the freaking video. Yes, it can. Now, what is the difference between UV resistant and UV stable? You know, UV stable, I think, can also get yellow, okay? Polyaspartic's UV stable, and that will yellow, okay? You just told yourself that it'll never yellow, but it does yellow, and so you're living with this lie in your head, or not lie, but untruth, you know what I mean? Misconception, that's a nice, that's a more, hey man, I wasn't lying to you, I was like, you know, it's a misconception I had uh, taken on. You know, I've, being in the business 14 years, 14 and a half, 0.75 years, I've gone and, and looked at polyaspartic floors that I laid down, I don't know how long ago, seven years, I think one of them was. I put some fresh polyaspartic on top of it, and guess what? It was a lot clearer than the other side, all right? So it does yellow, okay? Otherwise, we'd be sticking that thing on, you know, spaceships and sending them up. You know, this polyaspartic could just be the best thing of all time, right? And there's polyurethanes that do yellow, but the aliphatic versions, there's different chemistry there. But the same with epoxy. So there's ways to formulate epoxy to make it more UV stable, UV resistance. Let's say resistance. There's ways of doing it. There's ways that you can put UV inhibitors, things that soak up UV, and those will last for a certain amount of time. And so out of your regular life, of a floor, it's gonna yellow slower than some of the other products. There's also a way to test this, okay? So you can put something through like weather, like weathering. So they'll put it through 500 weather cycles. And I don't know if 500 means 500 days. I have to get more information on that. I'm not gonna pretend like I know, but at least I'm putting you on to, you know, giving you some, some bunny hole, rabbit holes or whatever to go into. And I'll, you know, get that information. but. You know, if one cycle is what, a month, a day? If it's a day, then you're looking at like after two years of direct sunlight, which you might not have indoors, right? You might have something different. So that gives you something. And then there's also a delta rating, which is look at it like an SPF, like S, sun protection, whatever. I don't even know, film, SPF zero, SPF 50, SPF 10, you know. So that's the delta rating. And so we do have products that we sell with Delta ratings. Others with the UV, you know, uh, weathering, where they put it in a box with a big old UV, UV uh, light, and it's gonna mimic, you know, uh, a cycle of sun, 500 days. They accelerate it, you know. You can do that with weathering too. Hot, cold, they probably throw, you know, stuff on it. I, I don't know, but there are scientific ways of testing so that you can compare one to another. Another thing to really look at, guys, is if you look at casting resin the ones that go real thick i had used a casting resin my wife put flowers in it it's this thick guys it's literally like i think it's four inches thick i have it sitting on my window it's still very clear it's probably been sitting there for close to two years and it hasn't ambered and especially when it's this thick if something this thick turned maybe 50 percent darker it would look a lot darker than if it was like this thick right so I, I, I see that as a really good scenario because looking at the uh, the thicker it is, the more obvious it is that something ambered. So it'll look very like cloudy and be hard to see through. So you can see through it very easily. And so, you know, what I've realized is how they actually 
come up with this UV resistance or, or, or ways that it can be done, right? So like you have different hardeners, some hardeners like am, amine, amine, A-M-I-N-E, amine, usually used to accelerate stuff like those will tend, anything that's accelerated in general via this process, I'm sure there's other ways, but traditionally like they add some amine, I could be wrong, maybe mother stuff, you know, chemist, please come on, I'll let you boy. They tend to yellow faster. So, so I always try to stay away from like fast curing epoxies if they're going to be the, the final thing that the person sees, right? If I top coat it, let's just say it's a solid color and I put a urethane that's also solid color, then I don't have to worry about it yellowing underneath because you're not going to see it. But if it's a metallic or something where that's the final thing, then you should probably think twice about using an accelerated epoxy because of that, right? Just for the sake of it turning yellow. Now, <clears throat> different hardeners, right? They have more premium hardeners. I'll go out and put one name out there, a cycloaliphatic. People, when you tell some people, bro, some people just think they know everything, but because they know a little bit and they're like, well, aliphatic urethane, there's no such thing as aliphatic epoxy. Okay, I don't know, what the hell is a cycloaliphatic partner in the epoxy, there's cycloaliphatic epoxies, right? And so you can do that with just the hardener and the resin itself. So there's a way to make the resin not weather as quickly. Now there's a, a way to kind of like molecularly change the resin side, which is the better way in my opinion. And then there's adding UV inhibitors, which essentially those inhibitors are like sponges. And from what I've learned about those things is that eventually they absorb all of the UV and they stop working. So it can slow it down. And then you have to look at like the reality, like the realistic view of uh, like, if I'm filling a resin up with gray metallic, that resin is, is coated with stuff. You're not gonna see that clear thing turn into a different color. It's not gonna be as noticeable. Also, I think we have an unhealthy you gotta give me a minute. I'm like hopped up off of this Red Bull. I've been like, I shouldn't even be drinking this stuff. Coffee's better. We have an unrealistic expectation of like yellowing, non-yellowing. And like I said, a lot of misconceptions like polyaspartic will never yellow. I don't think so. Paint on a wall yellows. Everything will break down with the sun is the most powerful thing on the planet. Second to God who created the sun. You know what I'm saying? It's going to degrade a lot, you know? So the thicker you put something, the more it's going to be noticeably yellow. The color that you use, if you use white, uh, it's going to be more noticeable, right? But as a whole, how noticeable can it be if it all just kind of slightly like starts to change a little bit of color? If you ever go in a house with white paint on the walls, you take, a, you take one of the uh, paintings off, guess what? It's really white underneath the painting and everything else has weathered. You know what I mean? From a variety of things. Cleaning the floor is gonna discolor it if you're using some kind of a cleaner, you know, whatever, different colors. So thicker will become more noticeable in yellowing with anything you use. It's funny, people say polyaspartic is yellow. Polyurethanes have a yellow hue to it, like off the beginning. There's other ones that don't, but they tend to have a yellowish kind of a thing. But when you put them on thin, you don't notice it as much, right? And then also there's certain colors that don't, you know, from what I've researched, basically tan colors, you don't notice the yellowing. So if you're gonna do something outdoors, tan is the best way to go. The gray stuff ends up looking green once you hit it with a little bit of yellow, and usually they're like bluish grays, so they tend to look like, like green over time, you know? So everything will weather. I think guys need to stop. I think it's important to like, if you're doing a white floor, Yes, call me. I'll sell you UV resistant white epoxy with a delta rating of five. And really, I don't know any other companies doing delta ratings. And I sell this one company that does with a proven track record. You know, it's been in like those like uh, weed growing facilities, whatever, where they have lamps on like most of the day, a lot of the day. And, uh, and so you have to have a healthy understanding and a healthy reality of what's gonna yellow. I have seen like urethane cement, it yellows like no other. That's based out of urethane. It's a water-based polyurethane, but it ain't like an aliphatic polyurethane. And so you put that down, and that's gray. That ends up looking like green, yellow green, especially by the doors. But we don't really care because it's not there to look pretty. It's there to 
protect the floor from a certain specific kind of wear and tear. And so, especially with guys putting thick floors, I think, listen, we're in 2025, I would say probably a good 20, 25 years, because people have been doing metallics early, like the 90s, but maybe like in the 2000s, 20, I would say 2010 is when like metallics started really like becoming bigger and it started growing to where it's become today. I think it's much bigger today. I've but guys weren't going that thick. So listen, people have been doing metallics with epoxy forever. I go back to floors that I've done in window areas with a lot of sunlight. They still look good. They don't look yellow. If I would have put, you know, a section of carpet where it never came off and then I lifted it up, I'm sure you would be able to see the difference. But I think if you're making your decisions of a, it's epoxy, or yellows. No, you're wrong. Everything yellows. Some at a slower rate than others. And so that's the healthy thing. Can you formulate an epoxy to slow yellowing? Yes. There's simple ways to do it by using different raw materials. There's ways to do it by adding stuff to it that's going to take the UV. So the reality is there are UV stable epoxies. We sell a variety. We have one that's, that's formulated in a way and you're going to see that it's actually made a lot like these casting epoxies. The resin is thicker. You know, people say, oh, look at the hardener, it's crystal clear. We've had crystal clear hardeners for a long time, you know what I'm saying? Some of them are very amber. Some of them, nobody really cares about that. You know, the yellowing is more of an industrial thing, the way it started. But yeah, like Gorilla's had a clear hardener since day one, going back to nine years ago when we first started, when we introduced it. Then we do have UV resistant versions. And then the word resistance, stable, you know, UV proof or something like that. You know what I mean? Like slip proof, slip resistance. Those are like legal terms, you know, because you have to, I thought you said it was slip resistant. I slipped. What is slipping? You know, in the court, in the room, in the court of law, it's like, what is resistance? So there are products formulated with the UV in mind. They're gonna do better in certain conditions. Is polyaspartic gonna last a lifetime, at like a hundred years? It'll last longer, but I think epoxy will last just as long. Meaning there'll still be a coating there that won't wear away. And it's a much thicker coat a lot of the times, right? So looking at it in those terms, you know, the expectation. I guarantee you if you put 100% solid epoxy, yellow or no yellow, it'll be there in 20 years. The rain ain't gonna beat it down versus polyaspartic. You know what I'm saying? So each thing has its own little chemistry and, and things of that nature. We have UV resistant epoxies. Now, some of those epoxies a little bit thicker, like you have to see how it works for what you're trying to do, right? So the final answer to can epoxy be UV stable, or I should say UV resistant, I'm gonna say absolutely 100% yes. We have a variety of those UV stable epoxies from Gorilla Coatings, from other companies, which I will not mention because then everybody else is gonna go out and we sell that too. But the one with the Delta ratings, and I have a specific white epoxy, so when they want the white floor, it's gotta be this product. Because like I said before, white is gonna show a lot. Tans tend to not show weathering that goes with paint outside right the tan house is gonna look nice the same color guys i'm sorry the phone's blowing up new jersey decorative concrete supply phone's ringing and so when you paint houses if you do a little research they're gonna tell you that those are the colors that you want tans darker colors are gonna just soak up uv much more than you know light colors i saw the the yellow like the safety yellow does really well white and as you get darker red is a terrible color <laughs> you know what i mean just drinks that up i'll go one more i'll go one more i'll take it up to the next level leave you with this goodie so it was said that if you put a uv stable thing like polyaspartic or certain polyurethanes on top of epoxy it was said that basically that thing would not prevent the thing underneath it from yellowing and i used to repeat this and chemists and manufacturers have told me that. But what has happened is this. My good friend at the Gorilla Manufacturing Plant told me, he said, no, you're wrong. It doesn't. He goes, listen, I, I know I've said the same thing, but I put it under weathering 
the what they have a machine that they do testing in house, so they test all this stuff. They run the test on it, and it slows it down. It slows the weathering down dr dramatically. So adding those layers on top of polyurethane or polyaspartic actually does slow down the weathering underneath it. And so it was always said, no, it doesn't, because the light's going to pass through the that thing won't yellow, but the thing underneath it will because it's not UV blocking, right? UV blocking is gonna like reflect out the sun like a mirror would, but tests in the lab has shown that it does. Listen, you wanna go out and buy a little UV weathering machine? I'm sure you can find one on the internet. I don't know how much it costs, but it's just a UV light. You keep it on, you put it on a piece of plastic, you test the one that is just chilling in the atmosphere versus the one that's sitting under the light, and you'll see the difference. I took it and I put one outside and one under, so, I have took UV resistant stuff and I kept one in the dark, like totally in the dark, which is not realistic test, right? Because your floor is not going to be in the dark. So I kept it from any UV resistance and I took the other one and I stuck it on top of my car, like on the dash. But the, the dash has uh, UV resistance as well. There's a UV resistant film on your dashboard, on the, on the mirror. So then I just would stick it on top of my car until one day I just forgot it on there, drove away with it, and that was the last time I ever seen it. But in, in those couple days that I've done it, I saw a difference between the one sitting on the hood and the one sitting in complete darkness. So you need to have a, a real understanding. In a house with regular sunlight that comes through, the one with the UV resistance is gonna turn yellow much slower. Probably won't even notice it. And you won't notice if it does yellow slightly over time than the regular resin that doesn't have the stability, right? You're gonna put one out in direct sunlight and one inside the house where it doesn't have direct sunlight 24, you know, 24 seven, you know, whatever, however many hours in a day. So you gotta compare apples to apples. UV resistant will last, will not yellow longer. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of times, guys, you know how many white floors I put down without using UV stable? It was never a thing. Now it's become a new thing, which is good because now manufacturers are trying to meet that demand. We've always had it. I, I'm one that's like, why don't we just make everything UV stable? Because its cost goes up. Yeah, it cost goes up, but if that's the, if your main resin is the thing that you're building, now you're buying a lot more of those things, and now you're just building the perfect resin. I've had companies, they're like, we have three different hardeners. The cheap one, the good one, and the best one. And I'm like, why don't we just only make the best one? It's more expensive, but it'll be cheaper once you buy more of those materials, and you know what I mean? So it's like, and everybody wants the best thing. So that's just my opinion on it. That's UV stability. Thicker, it will be yellower, will show more ambering than something that's thin. You won't notice it. And then, you know, different colors, right? White is gonna, you're gonna notice it more. Things that are filled with the metallic or with like Terrazino, where it's sitting in the entire matrix, you don't notice it as much. And then you have to just adjust your expectation of like, oh yeah, it's yellow. This doesn't yellow. You're wrong. Polyaspartic is already yellow. Do with that what thou wilt. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today. If I can help you with any materials, we have industrial coatings, we have residential stuff, we have polyaspartics, we have very unique product line with so many options, so many brands that quite frankly, a lot of the distributors, I would say 99% because I'm thinking of one specific good guy. He also does what we do. We have multiple brands. We're multiple trick ponies. I give really good pricing on big jobs. 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 square feet. We can compete with all those companies. There will be prices going up for all the other brands out there that are using Chinese resins. There is a tariff that's going to be slapping everybody coming in September. You heard it here first, even though I talked about it a couple months ago. It was supposed to hit in August. Now going to get pushed back to September. Big companies like Sherman Williams, Sika, and everybody else. A lot of Canadian brands that were just bringing in Chinese products, pretending to assemble them in Canada, taking advantage of the United States tariff, NAFTA agreement between Mexico and Canada, bringing it into the, into the state without tariff, pretending it was made in Canada they're gonna be getting hit with a high tariff. They should be getting hit with big fines because you just broke the law, you lied. It's like taking a car that's made in Germany, bringing it in. There's a different tariff on that. It's a much higher tariff than bringing in the parts and then making those the car here in America. That 
benefits our country and so there's a lower tariff there versus you know shipping it made over there and brought in here so that's essentially what it is i'm surprised that america is doing something about it but they are and we should see what happens in the next couple months so gorilla coatings baby made in america help support american workers but if you like to support our canadian brothers out on the border you know what i'm saying but we have that too guys we have that too so listen god bless you have a great day can have UV resistant coatings.